Hello everybody and welcome back. Um, I'm Diane and he's Josh. Um, and today, oh god I can't even do this. Um, yeah we usually make narrowboat vlogs um, but today we're doing something a bit different. We're doing another little um, explore video and uh, today we're going to show you how the Oxford Canal was built on a pin sized budget. The Oxford Canal was built for the original purpose of supplying Oxford and London with coal. The idea was to link the Coventry Canal with the River Thames in Oxford, creating a 78 mile canal. At that point there was no other links from London to the Midlands. Construction started in 1769, James Brindley was the engineer but sadly he died when the canal had only reached Brinklow so his assistant Samuel Simcock took over. In 1774 the canal had reached Napton and it was at this point the canal company started to run out of money. This caused a second act in 1775 allowing the canal company to raise more funds. By 1778 the canal had reached Banbury with great celebrations but yet the canal company ran out of money and Banbury would be the new terminus for the Oxford Canal. Could you really call it that though? Eight years later, in 1786, the canal finally continued construction towards Oxford with its new engineer, James Barnes. They were determined to finally get to Oxford after 17 years of construction, but in order not to run out of money, for a third time, the canal company was working with a pin-sized budget, which meant certain cost-cutting measures had to be taken. So as you can see, we're at a lock on the Oxford Canal. And this is Baker's Lock, which is 8 foot 6 inches deep. And it takes us down onto the River Trowell. More on that later. But there's something quite different about this lock than most other narrowboat locks. So we're going to show you what it is. Now as you can see, this is not your ordinary single lock. It has two top gates. Usually, a single lock will have one top gate and two smaller bottom gates. But past Banbury, where the canal was revived and built in a cheaper way, these new lock designs are the norm. And actually I think they're better than the standard ones, as you don't need to jump from one gate to the other, and you can shut both paddles on one side when you open the lock gate. So that is the Oxford Canal behind us, there, point your finger, um, which joins the River Trailwell, as I mentioned before. But why does the canal need to join the river in the first place? Well, that's to save money, of course. Think about it, the channel is already there. They don't need to pay men to dig out a new channel when they could just use the existing river. But would it really be that easy? But that wasn't without its downfalls. A major problem soon occurred. What happens if the river levels rise? Um, and as you can see, <laughs> there's a marker right there. The long which way Which says, up. closure max. So once it reaches that, Mark. it closes. And um, obviously, that means no one can pass through the river, <laughs> making it impossible 
in the winter times when the water levels do go up and it rains a lot yeah, for any through. traffic to get through and that would become a major problem for the canal and an oversight that they did not expect but practically in the winter this part of the canal and the two river sections were in in yeah, passable you'd be, you'd be stuck in the middle wouldn't you yeah and that is a major problem yeah. with using a river in your canal Now, as you can see behind us, that is not your traditional lock, is it? That is a no. weird shaped lock. Yeah, the last I've one. I've ever seen one. The last one was like that, coming yeah. onto the river, wasn't it? But or they were the once traditional locks. They were normal, like all the other locks. But something dark well, you fit happened. Two in there, then, couldn't you? Yeah, small ones. <laughs> um, but the reason for it, guys, is it's another oversight. Okay, and uh, what happened was. Because they're dumping all the water from all the other pounds into the river with the last lock there that we uh, came through Baker's Lock, all that extra water is going into the canal, or into the river, sorry, and then it's flowing down the river. It's going. So all that water they've got, the canal company that carries on down the canal, is going to waste. So what happened was um, the pounds below this lock here, Shipton Lock were draining because there wasn't enough water so they had to make them wider in order to fit more water in to take more water down to the next pounds because obviously they would dry up because there wasn't quite enough water getting to them and uh, that's why they're wider very very weird but interesting yeah it's only the and, second um, one we've seen isn't it yeah they're actually kind of cool because you can fit about three boats in if they're <laughs> you'd have to small. try and squash out getting yeah. out though because it's only yeah. a small opening So the final cost cutting measure was these things, bridges. Now on most canals they would have been made out of brick, stone or even maybe iron. Um, but a cost effective alternative was the swing bridge, which was made out of wood. A little lift bridge. All that. Lift or swing bridge. No. Not really. okay. Whatever. A cost effective alternative was the lift bridge. Far cheaper to make and much easier to build. The South Oxford Canal has perhaps the highest volume of lift bridges of any canal, which far outweighs the number of bricks and stone bridges. Of course, there were two major downsides to this cheap solution, one being maintenance. Unlike brick bridges, lift bridges were made of wood, which rots over time and would need to be replaced quite regularly. Also, it meant travelling boats might have to stop at these bridges and operate them, which, of course, time is money. Where a brick bridge, you could just go straight through. So, that's it. That's our video. 
on how to make a canal on a pin-sized budget. <laughs> or how they made the Oxford Canal on a pin-sized budget. Oh, this is a beautiful canal. Yeah, right? yeah either way. Absolutely stunning. It's lovely. We've loved it. Sun setting now. Yeah. Beautiful. beautiful. It's just calm and lovely. Um, but yeah, quite an interesting story um, of how, uh, what measures they took to make the canal as cheap as possible because they were struggling to finish the canal obviously and they got to Banbury and then nothing happened for a, almost a decade or a decade and uh, eventually they managed to scrape a bit of money together but they had to make some um, compromises along the way as you've seen today um, but nonetheless I hope you all enjoyed yeah please like and subscribe <laughs> subscribe means 100 free um, and you know, put down in the comments if you want to see any more of these yeah. videos, different our types little, of videos. Our little documentaries. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're liking them. Thanks All right, so. my arm's going literally Thanks dead. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Oh, I got my arm. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome back. I'm Diane, and she's Josh. <laughs> the other way round. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, today we we um. Oh, let's try it again. <laughs> so that is the Oxford Canal behind us, and as I just mentioned, we come. But that wasn't without its downfalls. I mean, it's it falls. But that wasn't without its downfalls. Now, what happens when the li liver? What am I on about? I have to make a like a a B no like a oh, uh, uh, what do you call it bloopers for this video. <laughs> it's a last cost cutting measure. There's these things here, bridges, and most bridges on canals would have made out of stone or brick, or even sometimes metal. But the cheapest possible way of doing it, and I'm not. God, <laughs> So the lot. So the last cut. God. Oh, the first thing I say. <laughs>